Hey everybody, welcome to episode 151 of the Bonehead Podcast, where we talk all things Blood Bowl. And Jingle... Welcome back. I'm Ben, and once again, I'm gone. Once again, I've gone. I've gone. But while I've gone, Ben is here. Hi, Ben. Hello. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm not gone. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all good. Ben is not gone. We're not gone. And neither is Ian Triple Power Triplo, the connoisseur of ones, the Highlander himself. Trips, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> it's just like, I was doing really great, and then you reminded me of all that. <laughs> It's okay. I'm I'm getting over my run of ones because uh, I play Blood Bowl with Ben on a regular basis, and that cheers me up. <laughs> <laughs> I have absorbed your energy with that regard, haven't I? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think we talked about this like before. Like, I was going to start putting your records on, like you know, and then I thought, no. <laughs> It's yeah. probably fine. But I imagine if you started it out, it would be like statistically fine. It's just there's a different weighting of confirmation bias, I think, when it comes to like the essentialness of that particular role. <laughs> I think that's where it leans into. Yeah. Um, you, you can pass the three plus dodge that doesn't make any difference all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The two plus pickup to make sure that you win. Oh, yeah, no way. Yeah. Oh, it's, the, it's the three plus with a reroll into the end zone. That's the, uh, that's the yeah. doozy. Uh, yeah. Those never happen anyway. Yeah, all the all the quad skulls, they're um, spectacular. Mm. The quad skulls yeah. have been um, the fourth guest, <laughs> like the fourth yeah, it's, host. It's pretty shocking that I feel almost in every game it happens, which doesn't seem statistically average. I don't, I'm not really sure on that, but like it does really feel like there is a quad skulls in everything. I must yeah. just set up for too many two dice blocks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ooh, fantastic. Right. Other than uh, other than other than dicey dicey goodness, what are we talking about today, Ben? Uh, we're going to be talking about the tournament series that we've been um, running over the course of the last year of worth of tournaments, if that's a sentence. And um, yeah, speaking and and in relation to that, uh, the upcoming Bonehead Bowl that is this weekend. Yeah, the last of the tournaments for this year, Bonehead Bowl, which. Ah, oh, it's really tough to say because, like, I love Beachhead Weekend. Beachhead Weekend is is mm. is fantastic. Uh, I love a bit of Dungeon Ball when we get a chance to play it. The Summer Squad Tournament was really wicked, but Bonehead Ball, I think, is my favourite. Just mixed teams shenanigans. It's a really good way to round out the year, and it will be the last scoring tournament in this year's um, tournament series. So we'll have a yep. look at the, yep. the rules pack. Um, sorry, B. No, I was just going to say I like I love it too. It, it's proper like fun blood bowl like blood bowl as a game as just an event was it your and first that... tournament yeah yeah, yeah it was. there yeah. we go oh talking about quad, yeah. quad trolls should have been the name of your team yeah I'm, I'm gonna bring them back next year i think i think i'll run quad trolls again <laughs> i think I, maybe no, you can do five can't you now because you've got snot links yeah it's not links yeah. and goblins and ripper i'm assuming Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that'd be wicked. Right, we've got a couple of bits of Blood Bowl news to jump into first, but then yes, it's tournaments. Okay, so a couple of bits of Blood Bowl news. I don't think we've talked about. Oh, uh, which button is it? That one. There we go. We've. Uh, I don't think we talked about. We've had um, Rowana finally review revealed as a model. I don't think we've had a chance to talk about this. What do you guys think of the Rowana model? I think she's really good, actually. I think it's um, it was always going to be tough because Punga released theirs and it's really good. <laughs> yeah, the Punga one's cracking. Yeah, but this one is like everything I love from Blood Bowl models, where you've got the sort of bit of silliness, like the bit of whimsy. The bird with the scarf is just brilliant, and um, yeah, I just I, I really like it. It looks like it will be really fun to paint. It's got that proper fun gnome feel of if you are playing gnomes, you are doing it because you want to have fun, not because you are taking Blood Bowl seriously. This mm. star player fits very much into that category, and you will probably also be using this if you are playing gnomes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's a good it's a good model. I think you're right, Ben. I think Punga have 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 done a brute fun here i think uh yeah. you know when uh they dropped all the stars in the almanac and brute fun was like all right two sex 
he's a, yeah. he is a ripper for the ages. Um, and uh, literally, that was it. And then Games Workshop released one. We're like, we've seen, I think you actually said, like, are we not, are we not is this not out? We're like, no, that was brute fun. Uh, Punga have basically done it for this one. Um, I think, I think I their think the Rodney is better. I like Games Workshop's yeah. Rodney is better. But yes. I think this is just so comparable. Like they're both really good models because the the build, the design of the model, it, like as a character, it's just really good fun. Yeah, I think the deer is is better on this one. I think they've really well sculpted and really well painted the deer. They have been absolutely I crushing it. Yeah, with the Forge World stuff recently. I mean, I don't know if yeah. we talked about Guffle Puss more because it's not really like a uh, not much of an impact. But this, they have gone to a lot of lengths to paint this. And I think this is the worst paint job I've seen, just simply from the point of view that the paint job itself is horrible. The technique is absolutely brilliant, but it's just they're, they're Nurgle, right? It's supposed to be horrible and they have overachieved, yeah. I think. <laughs> I like, this is the, yeah, the yellow colour on the ooze is just It's the most very unpleasant. sickly <laughs> scheme. I love the green, obviously, because yeah. it's green. But like... Everything else on it, the pallid flesh tone, absolutely everything is just brutal and miserable. Um, thoughts on this guy here? So, uh, Guffer Possmore is an interesting one. I got, I, what are your thoughts on the model, first of all? I think he's a great alternate bloater. Um, <laughs> I think, I think it, the model is really cool, and I, I, I love like the Nurgle mouth, like chest mouth and stuff, like recently painted the full Death Guard, and a bunch of them have it. Yes. And it's, it's really fun. Um, it, it is a really, it's a proper Nurgle model. I like it. Yeah. It's definitely in that category of you would not use this on any other team as any other position. No. If you are, this is a Nurgle player through and through. And they've had a lot of, lot of work into the, the design on and detail, or even down to everything in the mouth. It's just, they've done that really well. Someone's had a proper fun time putting that yeah. together. <laughs> Yeah, they've they've excelled. My my one concern is that Ben, you've immediately said that this looks like a great alt sculpt for a bloater. Um, but mm. looking at his 2016 stats, this guy is strength three, edge four, so uh, edge two plus in this edition. This yeah, guy well, you... smacks of strength four, edge four plus, not strength three, edge two plus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where's the edge two plus. Like, do they justify that in the article? I didn't read it. Like, why is he so agile? He's a he's a catcher uh, that got is converted that just, into yeah. into Nurgle, and then obviously he got the punches, like really well, <laughs> which works really well with monstrous mouth, right? Because his monstrous mouth is catch. catch. No, it's, no, it's, it's catch villain. catch reroll and the protection of sure hands. Oh yeah, yeah, that's from it. from strip ball, which makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, um, it, so hands, yeah. yeah, I don't. It's it's an interesting one because I don't know if a movement. What was he? What was he in the other movement five? I think. Yes. Do you know what? After my run on Sunday, he's as fast as I am. Again, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not, not brilliant. And I'm not Edge Two Plus, uh, but I look, yeah. I look more Edge Two Plus than this guy, which, which is an interesting <laughs> one. Like, <laughs> um, I like his little, his little chompy ability, like quick bite once per game. If Guffle is marking an opposing player who catches the ball, he may immediately make an unmodified armor roll and subsequent injury roll if necessary. So basically, if he's next to somebody who catches the ball, he stabs them, and if he breaks mm. the armor, he just robs the ball. Um, is once per game, and this movement five piece has got to be next to the player that's catching the ball, and that player actually hatches has to catch the ball. Then you have to successfully stab them. Uh, to be fair, anybody who's catching a ball in the tackle zone against Nurgle, who probably has a disturbing presence piece yeah. of it, is probably like that. That player who's catching the ball is probably not going to have the best armor. So, like the, the opportunity of stab is, and you're probably looking at a fifty-six percent success rate. Like, so basically, a four plus. You, you you know you place them, you place them prone and steal the ball. When that yeah. when that spikes, it's funny because people are like once per game. I was like once per game, once per league is that going to happen? Because um, your opponent's going to look at that and go, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not going to use it. Yeah, yeah. it works. Like, it's working a handoff as well, wouldn't it? So like you wouldn't yeah. obviously you don't throw it with Nurgle, but Stone Presence still modifies the catch anyway, doesn't it? So it's the kind like, of thing. Yeah, it does. Actually, yeah. yeah, you're going to have to go. Is this the time we use that skill? Because we haven't. Yeah used it i think this is going to be the skill that as you're driving home the next day from work 
you're like, oh, mate, could have stabbed him. Could have stabbed him. <laughs> like, oh, that came up in January. Uh, and that could have been a thing. Yes. Um, I know that some of these are quite controversial, these skills. Like, some people really don't like like how they add like new stuff in and like these little extra niche things. But I really like the little extra things they add. This is just not one I do like because I, I like it when they work. I like it when you bring that star and they do the thing. Um, there's, there's like I a, prefer the ones with more than once per game. There's, but... a, there's a sliding scale, right? Isn't there? Which is like yeah. um, powerful and fluffy. This one, very fluffy. Like, I like that. Like, he's got a big mouth. Like, he chomps a guy. I get that, but from a usefulness level, it's it's not not ideal. So, I just, well, I, I, for some reason, I, just don't, I don't know why they couldn't just have like once per game he can declare a stab action and takes the ball if he breaks armor. Like that 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 could just be really fun. That would be really I good. I don't think it'd be actually. that broken. Like no, that would have it, been. It's a star player. Like they're meant to do something. That would have been better. Um, yeah, that would have just been much better, and you would have gone, "Oh, that's interesting. I'll take him." Uh, instead yeah. of being like, I don't know what I'm doing with this guy. Yes, yeah, sure. If he's Edge 2 Plus like he was in 2016. Cool. <laughs> I don't mm. know what I'm doing with that. Uh, but then again, you're running Nurgle, so GG's. Uh, and the last one we've got is Jeremiah Cool, uh, who mm. is a an infamous star player in the Dark Elf realms. Uh, he is coming in at a budget price of 4 million. Oh no, just three hundred and twenty k. But uh, his his list of um, his list of stuff. If we look at the two thousand sixteen edition, is actually know it's actually written in the article. Just like his golden locked rival, Cooler's movement eight and edge one plus, which makes him as slippery as he is swift. So he is a movement eight, edge one plus, blodger with dive and catch, dump off, um, at least. So uh, thoughts on whether a movement eight, edge one plus, blodger is useful? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I think it has niche utility. <laughs> yeah, you look at the Nurgle star player and you're like, I don't, I don't quite understand what I'm meant to do with this. You look at this guy and you go, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do with it. I just don't know how I'm going to afford it. Like, uh, what, what's the like? Where's the Blood Bowl loan sharks? Like, let's do that. Mm. Um, I, I tell you what, guys, I absolutely positively maintain gnomes should have had access to Elven Kingdom star players. Yeah, like, they really should. All of the other stars, with the exception of the Chaos ones, which needs to be fixed as well, have access to a stunty team that can just binge star players. Like, a gnome yeah. team with access to the Swift Twins or Jordel or this lad would have been really like, oh, that's yeah. that's that's unnecessary. Like, it would have been really interesting and you would have got, like, I just, I think that's such a this miss. This would be really strong. This would be strong because, uh, like, gnomes can just, like, stack a ball and then this guy with add one plus dodge can just run in grab it he might even have like nerves of steel or something um actually that doesn't modify pickup anyway does it no, but um no. you, you could just like he could just go in he doesn't need it. he's got add one plus he just grabs it runs off you score like i, I just think it that would be really interesting like i mean it's kind of spoilers but i'm running a similar game plan for bonehead bowl um <laughs> nice with, with and like Oh, it would just be awesome to have this. Yeah. And it would be you to use. Like he's meant to be like what, the best player in Blood Bowl? Arguably, yeah. arguably so. So his old his old stat line was the same with block, dodge, diving catch, dump off, kick off return, loan and nerves of steel, pass and sidestep in the 2016 edition. Um he was one of those gold star players, which I think is fair. He was also 390, so they've reduced his cost a bit. So it's possible he doesn't have nerves of steel or um on What's the it? ball. What was yeah. the gold star player? Um, they were like a Hall of Famers that you could basically just not include. You had Bob Bifford, oh, um, yeah. this guy, and maybe Jordell? Can't remember. Like proper like old school, like yeah. They introduced well them known. and then yeah. and then they went away, which which is which is fine. <laughs> but yeah, I think this guy on gnomes would have been really interesting because he would have been like, oh, this is the. Um, this is the uh, Hackflem Snotling build. This is the Griff Halfling build. This could have been the Jeremiah Cool Gnome build. Uh, but no, unfortunately, um, if you're going to try and run them in a tournament, it's going to be very expensive to do so with any of the elf teams. It can be done. Uh, and I think it will be quite fun because he is powerful. And like this is one of the things I think we talked about, like one of the in-between season like elements we would like to do of Monday Night Blood Bowl is run a couple of like star player match plays like griff versus jeremiah cool like that would just be very cool 
um, because it's potentially the only time you're going to see that. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I think you can you can make it happen. It's a it's a board game. Like, if you want to do that, you can do that. I think we could do that. I think, we just yeah. do. I think I think we should do that. Uh, so yeah. trips can just remove them on turn one of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your alignment play my alignment. <laughs> the only thing about this model for me is this is the first time I've preferred the artwork to the model. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I was a bit unkind about the artwork in the video when this dropped, the news one. Um, I said this looked a little bit like those drawings you can pay someone £10 to make of you by a beach uh, in the UK. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is true, and I still prefer the artwork to the model. The artwork feels more like a dark elf. Than the and that's it. Partly it's the model, and partly it's the painting. Yeah, the face isn't great on the model. Um, yeah, he's he's got a very broad face, which yeah. makes him look a little bit. Oh my god! Do you know what? Trips. He's got a Romulan forehead. He look does at, have a Romulan. Look forehead. At that, look at he, that. he looks like he's aged significantly during his time on Blood Bowl. <laughs> so the prominent eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, I love him even more now. This is great. <laughs> The it's... artwork's very anime, isn't it? Yeah, the artwork yeah. is a little bit unusual yeah. for Blood Bowl, I think. But that manga. The the face, the concentration on face detail is 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 a little off putting. Like that is <laughs> that's like yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And I do love what they're doing with star players at the moment. Um very much to your point, Ben, like it is a board game. And I think I think all they need to do is kind of like potentially do something produce a game mode or just something so that people have got easy access to be like ah we can run star players by doing this like we could do that i know we can like anyone can mm. but it's like it's just a bit bit, bit peculiar or blue just make the elf stars available for for gnomes like just just do it yeah exactly. well they sort of did it with the match play guides that came out but the problem is you'd have to set your team tv at like 1.5 to, to get stuff into this, so yeah, exactly. Oh, look, the prospect of going to a one point five million game—it's just oh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fun as a tournament, but it it you could do it for one-off games as yeah. long as both of you put the same mentality into it, and you didn't have the chorf coach turning up with every positional and all the skills. Yeah, I think we should do it. Yeah. Even if it's just a couple of like spotlight stars, because the star yeah, exactly. players models they're so interesting, and I think I think that'd be really 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 cool to do. But the, the game can be like Jeremiah Cool versus Griff, like you say. Exactly, really cool. like something like that would be. I just think quite a. Like, I watch a lot of forty k stuff because no way in hell am I ever 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 going to play it. But like it's it's a fun thing to watch and see. Um, and I wonder if like these star player things is kind of like the only way people are going to ever see griff versus jeremiah cool is if we do an exhibition match featuring those mm -hmm. <laughs> potentially yeah we just have to eliminate the kickoff rule that gets the star player sent off before yeah exactly yeah for sure <laughs> and we may yeah we may also need to not let you play this game trips um <laughs> right i know we talked about it on the last episode but uh we are the end of October now. We're going into November. Um, likelihood of any more Blood Bowl news this year, Trips? It looks looks slim to none. We've got, if you look at what uh, GW still got to release before the Christmas run-in, they've got army boxes. They've got yeah, uh, yeah another Necromunda book. Um, <laughs> That's your got... stocking feel. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, some bits. I, I don't think... We're going to get anything. There was a lot of people thinking, are we going to get a, an almanac or a star player manual with all the stars that have come out? I just can't see us getting anything this side of Christmas. I think they dropped the last almanac in January uh, a year ago when that was when they had Ripper and all the, all the splash releases. I could see that coming next year. Like after Christmas, yeah. they dropped the almanac. It's got all these star players, potentially a few more that we've not seen. Um, and it just kind of ties it all in. Ready for another team in the spring hopefully i know we talked about what's next there's only two more teams and like the logical thing is there's a you know we've been four years into this edition now so like the rumors of a new edition which i feel like is a christmas release like for for games workshop i feel like a, a new boxed game it makes so much sense yeah <laughs> excuse me oh, interesting one anyway 
yes, it would be cool to get some more stuff. I like what they're doing with star players. It's good models. Uh, but um, yeah, I think I think we're safe for a couple of weeks. It's time to just relax and play with the stuff you've got. And the best way to do that is by a mixed teams tournament. Recording. Like Bonehead Bowl. So as we're recording, we've got two hours and twenty. Well, two days and 20 hours. God, that would be stressful, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Ready to go for Bonehead Bowl. There's the rule book. Here's the rule book. So Bonehead Bowl is our annual mixed teams tournament. It is the most nonsensical of all the tournaments we do. It is the most non-standard and quite frankly, hmm, interesting. Something's happened with the, uh, with the visibility of that PNG. It's just shaded the whole thing. Um, quite frankly it's the most fun so we're going to be doing this on saturday this week so this podcast is coming out on thursday i'm going to push it earlier this week so that we can get people um to well just because we've got the tournament series to talk about and i want people to have a couple of days to listen to the pod ahead of saturday so um bonehead ball we talk about it every year it is a mixed teams event and the deal here is every team has been assigned an alignment either order or chaotic unless you're vampires, in which case you are both. And you can take up to two teams and put them together. You have to have a minimum of four players from both teams. Obviously, it's 11s tournament, so you're going to need more of one than t'other. Uh, and if you take two teams, you get access to the star players for that would be able to be taken by either of those teams. Uh, and the highest reroll is taken. So you've got Amazons, you can pair them up with Dwarfs, Elven Union, Gnomes, Halflings, High Elves, Humans, Imperial Nobility, Lizards, Norse, if you choose Old World, Ogres, Old World Alliance, Slan, Vampires and Wood Elves. Uh, and then on the Chaotic side you've got Black Orcs, Chaos Chosen, Chaos Dwarfs and new Chaos Dwarfs, uh, Chaos Renegades, Dark Elves, Goblins, Human, Corn, Necromantic Spike, Norse, but only if they've chosen favoured of, Nurgle, Ogres, Orcs, Skaven, Snotlings, Tomb Kings, Undead, Underworld, and Vampires again. So you've just got like a brutal amount of things you can mix up. I, don't, I, I think it's potentially less than it was with the very first Bonehead Bowl. There's still a, a flipping ton of combinations, but you don't have to take a mixed team. You can take a standard team if you want. You can also take a um, a college team from Dungeon Bowl. So if you put in the time and the effort to put a Dungeon Bowl team together and you're like, ah, oh, my College of Shadows would be absolutely mad on an 11s pitch. Well, this is the format for you because you can be like, hmm, I'm actually just going to run this now. Uh, we're running a pretty low TV because it's a, an there's just more complications right so um it is 1100 and your skill package is built up of the combination of tiers for your team so if you take a tier one team and a tier three team you get the skills for a tier one team and you get the skills for a tier three team if you take two tier three teams so you, you bundle up gnomes and halflings you get it twice if you take just humans then you get their tier twice so uh two primary for tier one one primary and one secondary for tier two and two primary and an additional secondary for tier three so you get a little bit of extra skill so you can combo up you know snotlings and skaven and you can get your four primary skills and one secondary skills and there's no restriction on who you can put them on but you can't stack uh you can swap a secondary for a primary if you want to stars can't be given skills the usual kind of stuff and we run this every year it's not massively changed the way we put it together this year the scoring is going to be the same this year because it just works, because it is absolutely monstrous. I I love this, and, and I wonder if, if formats like this, if Games Workshop does slow down on the Blood Bowl releases, or they don't go the new edition route, this, I think, is going to be where people end up going for, for their more Blood Bowl kicks, because actually you start brewing up a roster for Bonehead Bowl, and it is the most ridiculous of rabbit holes, Ben, right? Because I think you're going to be one yeah. of our, our, our coaches on the day, Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think the game plan of like when you brew up a roster in this is like, what can you, what do you want to, what if you have a team that's like a favorite team that you like to play and you just wish they could do something else <laughs> that would help them or like have something else, I think it's perfect for them. So my roster is high elves with gnomes. Hey. I do that. My favorite way to play elves is just the nonsense lobbing the ball proper like elf stuff um I, it's not the optimal way but it's really fun and um the thing that they struggle with is getting the ball on defense that can be really hard as elves so without not having skills yeah 
Yeah, exactly. Why not have a team like Gnomes where they can get the ball very easily and not really score as threateningly? So now I've got this. There's basically the game plan is to just try and dodge, wrestle, sack the ball, put it in the hands of a thrower, and send it off to a, one of the many catchers I've got in the forms of elf catchers and foxes. Yeah, I thought there'd be a couple so, of boxes. Are you taking any guard, yeah, boys? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, both dodged up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. love that. I think yeah. that's a really. I think, just, I think it's quite standard. I think I've got blodge blitzers, dodge guarders, and um, you might get just... one more skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a cannoneer thrower because I'm just going all in on that. Oh, you're going to hoon it. Not, not the skill you should take. Probably just another dodge is better or a wrestle on the catcher. But it's... um, I've got also got four rerolls, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> because gnomes are so cheap. cheap. That, yeah, exactly. See, that's that's what's, so, that's what's so cool about it. Because you're like, oh, what if like you paired up the foxes with the elite throwing of high elves? Like, this is like... And we were yeah. talking earlier, right, about the four troll build or the five troll build now. Like, it is... It is dumb, but it is the only opportunity you get to build this stuff. And also, I think Trips, we've said this before, like every game you have at Bonehead Bowl will be a game that probably has never been played before and will probably never play again. Absolutely. It's it's the one of those it's the one of those rare times where what are you bringing at the start when you ask someone you're playing with does not tell you the entire story <laughs> because the fact of them going oh i've got underworld and ogres you might go i still don't know what you've got in there because have you gone heavy on positionals with one team where if we put your skills um having having done a, a number of the roster checking this morning and well done to most of our players for getting legal rosters um it is lovely that even when you go, oh, there's two coaches with the same uh, races, the rosters don't look anything like each other. So you you could you could play twenty mixed team games against someone, and you will not play the same game anywhere near twice. I've just done some quick maths. I think we've got five hundred and eighty different teams that could be taken, but very much to what you just said, drips like. I mean, when you even before you even add the potential of taking star players, like there's there's thirty teams in Blood Bowl, right, Ben? And there's probably about thirty six different rosters. If you yeah. go lean heavily into like a star player here, or like like there's just I mean, thirty six might actually be a bit generous um, when it comes to builds for Blood Bowl. Now having five hundred eighty, and then. Do you go, like Trip said, heavy on this side, light on this side, or do I go light on both and then mix two star players that couldn't normally play together? Or, you know, I mean, that high elf one is an interesting one because you could be like, cool, I'm going to play high elves, but actually I'm going to use Rodney to be in the backfield to grab the ball and then hand it off to my thrower. Uh, and then my thrower throws it and catches it with Fox. Like, it's just, it's just stupid. And I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't yeah. love it more. Yeah. This is just... I think guys, I think this this is this would be the blood bowl that I played for the rest of yeah, time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I just like it. I say it's very unserious and everyone has a good time and it's like you just you wait for those games where it's like 5-4 and <laughs> you know cuz it's just ridiculous. Yeah. That, that was Rick versus yeah. Drew in the first well, one. Yeah. yeah. Wood yeah. elves and halflings again. I can't remember what Drew was running but that was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I think the yeah. biggest problem that we have with <laughs> Bonehead Bowl is the fact that you can spend not just days, weeks roster theorizing with it. Um, getting to a roster involves usually going through at least 15 different ones. <laughs> uh, even when you get to the point where you've picked your races, as you said, you're still there defining and playing around it, which is part of the fun with this tournament is the fact that you can, there, there is no, this is the build. For this tournament um we we are many years into running bonehead bowl and we still do not know what will make a bonehead bowl winning roster um every year it is quite different to the others because it is so much impacted what other people bring yeah yes the match always yeah ones that i know are top performing dark elf skaven has always done pretty well that is what i was thinking that's the one you always go to in your mind but quite frankly yeah. if you're if the dark elf skaven roster is coming up against uh an undead tomb king roster with six big yeah. guys <laughs> that they've you know, like that's that's just not going to be around for long 
<laughs> so it's like you you can bring your filth, but you will be playing against somebody else's filth as well, which yeah. which is the is the I just I just think it's brilliant. And you kind of enter that nonsensical contract of like I'm going to try and do stupid over the top stuff here and your opponent's like yeah cool i've got six strength five guys uh, and they're all none of them have got nega traits uh this is yeah. it's just you get to go and you i feel like you get to do your thing like you get to try and pull off the thing that you're building up um so we got ben as is ben primary or is the backup ben uh i don't really know i guess we'll work that out on the day yeah because it's milton brewing up a roster as well or is it you trips Milton has a uh, roster. I have not yet to check it, so we of course will check roster for Milton to make sure he hasn't bought seventeen different stabbing pieces. Uh, Milton has is got orcs and undeads. He is running. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Now it's Milton, so that's going to be tough because I think the positionals you want to lean on there are the mummies and the black and the big and blockers, but Milton yeah, just. Is, uh, is racist for non-block things. So yeah. <laughs> blitzers and ghouls, I would imagine he's going with. Yeah, blitzers, ghouls, ghouls are already and... really good. Yeah, that's interesting. See, that's just yeah. so potent. Um, I love it. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, Trips. I know you guys have been checking the rosters today. Any any high level takes on what's what's popular this year? What's what's kind of anything so to keep your eye on? The last couple of years have been how many big guys can you squeeze into a bonehead roster team? We seem to have had the complete flip of that this year and everyone going, ah, you remember those edge pieces? Let's get those in. We have got a a much, much higher ratio of uh, elven teams and double elven teams and people using dodge as the skill and detail and hardly any star players. Mm, interesting. So maxing out on positionals and detail. Um, and there's is... a couple of really funny rosters in there. Like, um, if you if you like if you like playing corn, you probably like playing with the frenzy piece. Well, why don't you play them with Norse and just make sure everybody's got <laughs> frenzy on the roster? <laughs> oh, four seekers, two ulf warriors, and a yeti, uh, yep. or a blood spawn. Yeah, that... that's horrific. No, that's that's yeah. oh. Yes. Now, I like the idea of a high edge tournament because I think we can get some good good amount of touchdowns scored on the day, which would be pretty cool. Um, now you said that, we'll have the TV at the event. I have to go to storage and get that out and the pictures. Uh, we'll have a touchdown tracker for the day, I think. Because if we've got yeah. potentially, I think we're going to have somewhere between 40 and 50 coaches. I think we've got some dropouts, some changes. Um, so I'll be well happy with sort of 44, 46 coaches turning up on the day. That'd be pretty amazing. Um, that would leave us with about 80 games on the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over under 200 touchdowns on the day, guys. Over. Over 200 touchdowns on the day. I still think Blood Bowl players are going to be conservative with it. I'll try my best to get 200 myself. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's high <laughs> odds. Like any game you get less than three will be a very big disappointment. Ben. Over and exactly. under for you for touchdowns, though, on the day. 10? Under 200, I think. Oh, for me personally. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to aim for. Yeah, 10 a good amount. I'm going to aim for 10. I think because we've got to remember Ben will be rolling his tournament dice, not his on stream dice. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they didn't do great last time, though. That sounds good. And I think <laughs> we, we see almost the extreme tournament play at Bonehead Bowl. The first game's definitely quite tight. Everyone's learning their teams. Not a lot of people will have played heavily with their mixed team. <laughs> so, the end of team, um, yeah, end of team uh, round one, everyone will know how they use the, the team. Round two's always the really tricky one. Around three, we get some mad, mad scoring and detail as everyone, everyone goes, the, the thing I wanted to do that I haven't done all day, I will now do yes. with this roster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, I love it. And we get to be at Entoyment. I miss Entoyment. I've got a big painting list for Entoyment. I need to buy some paints. Um, I Me was, too. I was thinking that's today. Actually, yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, I was, I was driving back from Brackley yesterday. I was like, right, I need some, uh, I need some Blood Angels Red. I need to this. I was like, should I swing by Games Workshop? And I was like, you're in. You're in enjoyment on Saturday. Like I was like, hey, yeah. I don't have to worry about it. I can just go downstairs. I'm also gonna have a look at see if they're they've got any um decent mats, not for blood ball pitches, but just like standard gaming yeah. mats. No, they usually have some deep cut ones. Yeah. They yeah. 
I'll warn everyone coming as well. Entoyment currently has a number of board games on a 50% off sale as well. So Ooh. I would imagine. Ooh. Yeah. Danger. Including some, Will Robinson. some that are in the a big Kickstarter ream as well. So 50% off them is a significant amount. Yeah. Available on the website to look at this afternoon. Yeah. Or, or, now. or now. Well done, Tris. <laughs> uh, no. But I tell you what, guys, um, I, I love Bonehead Bowl. I'm looking forward to just hanging out with everybody all day and, and seeing them just brewing. I just seeing what they've brewed up and hanging out in tournament. I am living for this day. Uh, we've got the loot. Some of it's arrived already, but it's Wednesday, so we'll be fine. So um, that's good. Uh, tr trophies are ready to just be painted. You guys are doing the rosters, which is fantastic. I'll make a copy of the sheet. Um, and then the only other thing we've got is the tournament series, which I can input on the day as well. The good thing about this is we've got Milton and Ben who are coming with rosters. It means we can make sure that we've got at least two TOs on the day. Um, yep. which is brilliant because we need to be Johnny on the spot with these scores. And, and so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so that's cool because the tournament series, if we go over to the bonus thing and go to BPTS, it's the last tournament for the tournament series. So uh, we've linked all of our tournaments together this year. So we had Beachhead 11s, Beachhead 7s. We had Dungeon Bowl. We had the team tournament. We had Bonehead Bowl coming up. And basically, we're allowing you to put your top three scores together, and that's gonna, that gives you a, a rank, a standing in the Bonehead Podcast tournaments. Now, I'm going to do in the tournament series. There we go. Let's zoom in so that those of you watching on YouTube can see this. Now, uh, one thing I, I I say forgot to do, I didn't consider doing it until the guys in the Discord asked sort of last week into this week, be like, can I see my individual scores? And I was like, oh, I didn't realize there wasn't hair. So if we look at the way the rankings are built up, your top three results count. So, and if you scroll over on this page, you can see Beachhead 11s, Beachhead 7s, Dungeon Bowl, Team Tournament, and Bonehead Bowl to get your top scores together. Now, standings wise, we've got Dalio at the top with 357 points, 30 points ahead of second place, which is Drew Blood. You will all know Drew. And then just behind him at 301 points is Master Wiggins. Then we've got Kaijin Chicken. We've got Nick. We've got BB Nut, Ben Davey. We've got Buster Gut next, 291 points. Seventh place, Andrew Primack at 288. Sam Like Scar, 284 points. Death Wish there, number nine, 276 points. And uh, James GG703. And oh, Titanium Boy's just there. And Baron's just behind him. And Captain Oates is just behind him. And Frodo's just behind him. This is, it's wicked. It's a cool who's yeah. who of the Bonehead Podcast regulars. Now, that's just the primary rankings. There's also everything on there. You've got your touchdowns, you've got your stunty, which are done the same for. So you can see Frodo's in the lead at 240 points there. Um, he's got a goo. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. Because he spikes a good score. It'll overdo it. Doesn't spike a good score. And it's a tough one for Bonehead Ball because even with stunties, you can double team some just absolute carnage yeah. so um, it's all there but the because it is the top three scores it's really mathematically hard to figure out who's placing so basically dalio's lowest score is 110 points whereas drew's lowest score it, lowest current scoring score is 104 points so drew is basically going to need to post better than 104 points to, to spike that tournament. And I think the max you can get in a game, and this one is like, I don't know, maybe it's like 150 or something. So it's it's really interesting to see as we kind of come to the end of the series, um, how close it is. And I know the guys have been talking about I'm the Discord. I'm going to be really intrigued throughout the day on this. This will be good. Um, yeah. Because you kind of know after game one, right? like the contenders already because yeah the some of these guys have got to get some pretty perfect scores master wiggins has got some uh he needs to catch 56 points on dalio and his lowest scoring one is 94 so it's interesting yeah exactly it's yeah. interesting to see but i mean not only is there the primary rankings you've also got the um the regional rankings which is why is that doubled that's foolish oh well you can check it twice. Uh, regional rankings, which I think is where the real business is happening because when you play a tournament, you pick your, your region of your team. So Badlands Brawl, Elven Kingdoms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And your, your, your points get bundled up for that. And the races within those are much closer. 
So on the day, we will be able to do the points we think for the series point. And if the champion is there, we'll be able to award the, the, the tournament series champion trophy. All of the other ones, we will not be giving out our bonehead bowl on the day. That will be a case of we need to go away, we need to check the numbers, and we will announce it on the following podcast. Give a yeah. full breakdown of the champion for Badlands Brawls was this, the Stunty Cup champion was this, because we want to make sure that we go get a chance to go through the numbers. Entering everything on a tournament is all well and good, but like we just said, you've got to go back and just make sure the top three scores are right and it's all pulling through, which I believe it to be doing. But um, And also the prospect of giving out like 20 trophies in one day is... is, is... <laughs> Not, yeah, that'd be like not, not Yeah, not ideal. Plus, I don't know if everyone's going to be there on the day. So, um, but I, I do love, I love, I love a tournament series, and this has been really, really, really cool. I don't think we're going to be able to do this to the same extent next year, um, with the way our calendars are working out. I think we're looking at two or three tournaments next year instead of five. Yeah. Um, but. I've thoroughly enjoyed it this year, and it's, 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 it's been really, really, really cool to see people like thirsting for victory in the way they are. Um, thoughts on the Total One series, guys? I, I've enjoyed following along with it. I think it's really cool, and the buzz that you get in like Discord with people talking about it is really, really exciting. Um, I, I like that as someone who's currently playing like a team like repeatedly. It's quite nice to sort of have that rewarded when you're like. Yeah, I want to be like the champion of chaos and stuff. I I think that's just really nice. Like, yeah, it doesn't. It's not the most like <laughs> you're not going to put it on your CV, but it's <laughs> you should. It just it's one of these things which is just like it embraces what we love about the game, which is like the community and the sort of narrative of things, and it just makes me really happy as a as a geek. As it stands, though, the champion of chaos is Primac with two hundred eighty eight yeah, points. Sense. He's he's looking he's looking good for that one. The Badlands champ at the moment in the lead pole position is Kaijin Chicken, but he's only 19 points ahead of uh, Deathwish. Elven mm -hmm. Kingdoms, Oliver Voldry, 235. That 6 nil drum in the first round of the last tournament definitely scored him some points there. He's 30 points clear. Poorly boy for Lustria against Snagger. Only five points in that one. Old World Classic, Dalio has crushed that one. Uh, Underworld Challenge, Oh, Master Wiggins is in a solid position on that one. And Sylvanian Spotlight Drew is in a solid position on that one. But, I mean, good tournament result. <laughs> it can be a big swing. I can't remember what we said for the rules back in Bonehead Bowl, but it's not its not a small amount of points. <laughs> I'm going to do that quickly, actually. Let's have a look. Double check the scoring for this one, because it's actually 40 points per win. So it is 51 points per match potentially yeah so 153 okay. would be a perfect spike on the day so that could be a that could be a big swing for some of these um yeah for sure yeah yeah because basically eliminate their lower score with the highest one so exactly yeah so drew would need to better his 104 and he could get up to like 150 so he could pull ahead yeah uh, whereas Dalio needs to score over 110 to get any... That's, that's going to be a real... And uh, Mr. Wiggins actually is 94 points. He could definitely, definitely gain ground on that. Mm. Mm. Actually, it's, it's, it's good. I love it. I love it. It was really fun to yeah, do this on a, on a call today. I was like, I need to put this out. And going through the stats, I was like, oh, God, this is what I love about Blood Bowl, um, which is hilarious because it's not actually the gameplay. But it's the game around the game that I just adore as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and I think it's really because of the community feel of it. So I think if, if you wanted to do this across a series of tournaments, you need a group of players that will talk to each other and challenge them because it has been great the last few months. Literally, as soon as we finished the last tournament, everyone was working it out. And it has definitely influenced what people are playing. But yes. in a good way, and it's it's created some really healthy rivalries about, oh, if I draw you, then that might be important for the tournament, but I might be able to knock your scoring down for the uh, tournament series as well. And especially with us having a sort of groups of friends and families uh, playing along as well, it's it's been it's been great to see that added layer of story to the tournaments. Uh, just looking at touchdowns, twenty one. All game is uh, Master 
Master Wiggins is in first place with 21 touchdowns. Dalio with 20. Drew Blood with 19. Ollie Baldry there with 18. One more tournament to go. That is all of them as well. That includes all. Uh, which I couldn't... Oof. And Titanium Boy with 35 casualties. It's just brutal. It's just fantastic. It's yeah, just... The, 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 the Priest Pack are um, really represented, aren't they? They are yeah. very, yeah. very potent coaches. It's yeah. wicked. It's been both brilliant and terrifying to watch them evolve over the last sort of three, four years. Because they they play some they play some good blood bowl and they spike sometimes really well. It's it's awesome and they're just wonderful people. In fact, everybody mm. on this list is just it's just wonderful. Like we've got such a good group of coaches, and that I think is 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 not said enough about blood bowl because yeah. it's just the community. Like Trip said, is just absolutely fantastic. So, a couple of days to go, we'll be at Bonehead Bowl. We're not going to be streaming it. We want to just focus on being there and talking to everybody and hanging out on the day. Um, but exactly. I'm just, I cannot wait to see everybody. Can't wait to see their rosters. And then we'll be back to talk about some of the roster picks, some of the matchups. Hopefully we can get both Ben and uh, Milton playing on the day as well. So we can get back yep. some some stories of uh, Fox Fox catching shenanigans and whatever block misery Milton's brewing up. <laughs> <laughs> you just know it's not going to be fun. No? <laughs> no, I was going to say, the only, the only loser in that game will be fun. Um, oh god, I really hope you two get paired up against each other. It was so fun oh, to god. see Trips and Milton play in the first round of the last tournament. Was it the first round or was it the second round? I can't remember. It was the, it was the first round and uh, yeah, yeah, Milton uh, managed to remain in the bottom table at the end of it. <laughs> that was the air-conditioned room, so there was a hidden advantage to that. Um, but wicked. Uh, any last thoughts on the championship or the Bonehead Bowl, guys? I think I'm good. Just good luck to everyone. Yes. Good. I cannot wait to see everybody on Saturday. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be back after that to talk about rosters in a couple of weeks' time. But for now, we're going to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon with more global content. Happy blocking. <laughs>